News 5 at 11 is sponsored by Metro Toyota. Visit Metro Toyota and see why since 1969, our customers send us their friends. Most awarded in Cleveland. News 5 at 11 starts now. Even though we're about a week away from the start of spring, things still feel very much like winter this Monday. We have a live look outside for you. Flurries still coming down in spots tonight. Oh, but just a few hours ago, we saw near whiteout conditions on some roads. This was uh, 271 near the Summit and Cuyahoga County line. <laughs> Driving home just a few minutes here. Chief Meteorologist Mark Johnson's with us. Mark, uh, messy for a lot of us yeah. growing up now? For a little period of time, we had this burst of moderate to briefly heavy snow for many of you. Right now, a live pick from Akron, and it is definitely winter-like. 29 in Cleveland, we got 29s for Ashtabula, Lorraine, and Mansfield, and still some scattered snow. Here are the current it looks at the road conditions. You can see they're wet. There's a little bit of snow here, much better than it was a couple of hours ago, all right? Much better. Let me show you the radar. Here's this little band swinging in. See that? Watch that. That is some moderate to heavy snow, and it's kind of fading away a little bit as it slides south toward Worcester, Akron, and Canton. And now we're seeing what I mentioned earlier would happen. We're seeing the lake effect snow kick in. Still consistent out here in Lake Geauga and Ashtabula counties. Even a little bit lingering to the west side. If you get under one of these snow bands overnight, another inch to two, maybe even three inches of snow by dawn. But for the rest of us, it's light snow and flurries and you get an inch or less of snow for the overnight hours. Well, News 5 has confirmed the Cleveland Browns are in internal discussions about needed renovations at First Energy Stadium. But a team spokesman couldn't yet tell us how much they think that would cost or how much of that renovation would be paid for by taxpayers. So some city leaders are already saying no when it comes to Cleveland residents having to help foot that bill. Why should the residents of my neighborhood have to pay for that? And why is it just Cleveland when a majority of people in that complex are not from Cleveland during game day? So far, Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb is not willing to comment at this time on internal talks for a Brown Stadium renovation deal. But News 5 investigator Joe Paganakis reports other city leaders had plenty to say. The time is now to start having the conversation. Cleveland City Council President Blaine Griffin says internal talks by the Browns on renovations at First Energy Stadium are needed with the Browns lease on the facility ending in 2028. Griffin says if paying for stadium renovations or replacement is brought to the taxpayers of Northeast Ohio, it's crucial more time is spent on the front end, educating the public on whether or not it's a good return on their investment. I believe it's going to have to be a lot of creativity. Uh, we're going to have to have a lot of conversations with our adjourning counties as well is with the county council and the county executive. A Cleveland Brown spokesperson responded to News 5 on Monday in a statement confirming, quote, the team has had internal discussions about renovations of First Energy Stadium and how it would fit into a broader vision for the lakefront. The team has made progress on a feasibility study launched last year, but couldn't provide any further details at this time. Meanwhile, Griffin believes investing in a new stadium will produce some benefits. We actually create more income taxpayers. We actually have more more in, uh, emissions tax. We have other things like bed tax and hotel tax. I was here. I heard the commitments. I heard the promises. And they weren't delivered upon. But Ward 8 Cleveland Councilman Michael Polenzik remains skeptical. He was one of nine no votes for the funding package on the current Brown Stadium back in 1996. A stadium that cost more than $280 million with $43 million picked up by the NFL. However, 75% was publicly funded. Something Polenzik believes showed few of the benefits it promised. The hundreds of millions of dollars to support the Brown Stadium. And at the end of the day, what did we wind up with, Joe? Number one in poverty, number one in childhood poverty. Now, so far, Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb's office isn't commenting on the internal stadium renovation talks, but Polenzik says if a stadium renovation moves toward $500 million or perhaps a billion dollars for a new complex, he has his own ideas on who should help pay the bill. Let the people who go to the Browns game, let it be added on to their tickets. Let there be an addendum to the ticket. And News 5 reached out to Cuyahoga County Executive Chris Ronane's office for this story, but we were told the county executive has yet to be contacted by the Browns about renovation or replacement of Cleveland Brown Stadium. You know, we'll follow through on this developing story. Reporting here in Cleveland, I'm News 5 investigator Joe Paganakis. 
Okay, the study Joe just mentioned focuses on several things, including how to provide accessibility to the lakefront and ultimately provide opportunities like new public parks, retail, office, residential spaces. Last June, Peter John Baptiste from Haslam Sports released a statement saying they've been discussing ways to best approach the lakefront's future. It read in part, the future of the stadium is one of several important pieces to the long-term execution of the lakefront project. And our organization looks forward to continuing to work with our community partners and leaders to identify next steps and our role in helping advance this initiative.